Welcome to the fourth video in my tower defense video log series. Um, I know it has been a while since the last time I um, actually added a video to this series, um, but I have had a lot of things to do and I haven't been able to document every step of the way. So instead of making um, a video where I break it up all the time and tell you about every single feature that I implement, I have chosen to make a log that actually explains you all the features that I've implemented since the last time um, I made a video. Also, if the frame rate looks a little off on this video, it's because my computer is not very good and it doesn't record on a high frame rate when there's a lot of things on the screen. It has nothing to do with the performance of the game. Um, so the game that we will be making in the end will of course have a high frame rate without all the all the low frame rate that you will see here. Maybe you'll see here. I'm not sure. Okay, so I would like to talk a little about the different things that I've added and um, also a little about the next things that I will be adding, which concerns I have and um, uh, which thing that we will need to um, consider doing or not doing for the next uh, part of this uh, this tower defense. Basically, um, I have added two portals. Sorry about that, that's my phone. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, I have added two portals to the game. And uh, basically, the blue portal is the spawn portal of this uh, the, of all the mobs. And the red portal is the portal that these mobs will try to run towards. All the mobs um, have implemented the A star, which I showed you in the last video how I implemented it on the player. Um, they have the A star, which means that they will try to find their path from the blue portal towards the red portal. So it, they will try to take the shortest path between the two portals. So I can try to place the space button. I've just implemented a functionality so whenever I place space, it will spawn a mob and it will run from portal to portal. So let's see, we spawn a mob here. And when the mob spawn, it will be small and then uh, appear, get larger. And if we go to the red portal, you'll see that it will disappear by shrinking, as you see here. So it looks like it disappears into the portal. I, I think it looks pretty cool, though. Also, the portal has a um, an animation. So when I spawn a mob, it plays an animation. And then the mob comes out like this. And as you can see here, they just run to the portal. And I have like all three, uh, all four mobs uh, implemented. As you can see, here. there's these four different mobs. Okay, um, besides that, I've also added some button for my towers. And right here, there's simply just some, some sprites that I use from, for the towers. I'm using them as buttons right now. But in the final version, I will be implementing some buttons that actually looks like buttons that will show the price of each tower um, so that I know which, how much every tower costs. I will be implementing some buttons for selling the towers and for upgrading the towers as well. But right now, these buttons out, out here are simply just placeholders. So don't uh, don't be discouraged because I'm just using some, some simple buttons out here. Right now, it just looks like normal towers that are placed in my world, of course. So I can place the towers by clicking on any of these buttons. So we can try with the fire tower. And when I click the fire tower or any other tower for that matter, it will um, show a blue circle. So the blue circle actually shows the range of this tower, which means that if I will place the tower here, it will be able to reach all the blue area around it. Um, so all mobs that enter that area will be shot at. Besides that, there is a green area under the tower and the green area indicates where I would like to place the tower in my game. As you can see right now, it's green. If it would be red, it will indicate that I'm not able to place the tower on that tile. Um, right now, I'm not checking for portals, so I can still place them on the portal. Um, but that's something I will also be implementing later so that we can place a tower rightly, directly on a portal, of course. If I place a tower, you'll see that it will start animating. So every single tower has an idle animation now. Right now, the idle animation here is simply a bubble and some heat going up. Same goes for the ice tower. It has some glare that goes down here. And the poison tower has some bubbles and a drip here in the front. And then we have our storm tower, which is like has some electricity on top here. So all these um, idle animations has been implemented. I'm also able to click on the towers right now, so I can see the range they have. 
So if I want to see where this tower can reach, I can simply just click on it and it will show me the whole area that allows me to attack some monsters. And what else? I can spawn the monsters and they have a pathfinding. Before you saw they move from this point right down here and all the way down here to the red portal. Well, they can't do that anymore because I have some, um, what is it called, some, some towers here. If I spawn one mob, it will start going around them. As you can see, every single tower starts shooting at the mob and that's also implemented. So the mobs doesn't have health right now, so they're basically mortal. Right now it's simply just demonstration. Um, but you can see there is a damage kind of animation that says like this poof thing, that uh, this cloud thing that happens when we hit the mob. Um, but they're basically ignoring it. As you saw, the red monster has some different animations. It was animated in the right direction. So when the mob, mob goes down, it is animated down. But when it goes to the right, as you can see here, it goes down. If it starts going to the right, then it uses the right animation. Another thing also is the fact that um, the towers are ordered in the, the layers based on where they are placed in the world. Which means that if I place a tower here, it will be drawn in front of the storm tower. If I place a tower behind the storm tower, it will be drawn behind the storm tower. And the same goes for the monsters. When this monster spawns, you'll see that it will go behind the fire tower if it does. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, but it does. And you can see when a mob, when a mob enters this area here, it starts shooting. And when it goes out of it, there, it will not shoot at them anymore. Um, also, the pathfinding works for the player. He can, if I click up here, for example, he will try to take the shortest path from his current position to the destination tile here. Um, also, let's see, when I, when I try to place a tower, you'll see that it will show red here because I'm not able to place the tower on these uh, tiles here where the, mo mo uh, where the tower is already placed. Um, of course, now I don't have money or anything. There will be implemented money in the game um, so that I can actually, uh, I can't just place towers for, forever. Maybe you noticed this before when the player walked, he walked through this tower. And that's simply because I only um, calculate the path of the player when I just click here. This means that if I would place a tower here, he will walk through it, as you can see here, because when he calculated the path from start to finish, he didn't know that this tower was here. So that's also something I might need to add to the game. So whenever I place a tower, uh, then every single mob on the field and every player on the field will have to have their path recalculated so that they don't walk through the new towers that I place. Because as you can see, it also goes for the mobs if, if they walk. And I place this first tower here. This mob here will walk right through this tower because he didn't know it existed when he spawned because the path is actually calculated for the mob right when it spawns. Um, yeah. So that's also something we'll have to take into consideration. Um, for example, maybe we should just make rounds in the game. So there is one wave and you're not able to build any towers during the wave. If you should be able to build towers during the wave, then you need to recalculate the path of every single mob every time you place a tower, that's for sure. Um, if, on the other hand, we choose to say, yeah, well, there's some pause in between rounds where you can build, well, then we don't need to recalculate the path for every mob because you will never be able to build a tower while the game is going on. So it will be cheaper uh, on performance in that way if we chose to say, well, we can't build when the mobs are running, we only need to make one path from start to finish. Another concern is the fact that right now I can simply block the path. I will be able to place a tower here. And now there is no clear path from our start point to our goal, which means if I spawn mobs, I don't think they will have any path. As you can see here, it, it doesn't even spawn right now because it can't go from uh, start to finish. And I get like an exception here because the path is null. So. To fix that problem, we will have to make sure every time we place a tower that we try to make a path from start to finish, which means if I try to place a tower here, it should, before I, the tower is placed, it should say, well, can I find from the 
uh, start point to the goal. If I can't find from the start point to the goal, well, then you will not be able to place the tower. If I can find from start to goal, well, then you can place the tower freely. So that's also something we need to, to work on. Uh, another thing that took a while to develop or uh, implement was the fact that I could uh, wall in my player here and I will get an exception when I click the round to make him move. Um, he doesn't get that anymore because it's, it has been fixed, but there were some errors when the player couldn't go to the part where I clicked. Um, I get a null reference exception, but that's fixed. Um, another thing also is the fact that we can't walk uh, diagonal when there is... For example, I can click here and he walks direct di diagonal up here, but the part between uh, from here to here is blocked. So if I click here, he will go around all the towers to this point um, so that it doesn't look like he walks into through a tower. And the same goes for the monsters. He will not be able, they will not be able to walk diagonal. If you can see here, he will have to walk all the way around all these towers here. He takes the shortest path like so. So that's also fixed, so he can't walk through them. For example, if we take the monsters, I don't know if I can demonstrate, if I place them here, these. You can see here. Okay, now he walks down there, of course. But anyway, if it, if the monster would have walked through here, it would look weird sometimes because some monsters are bigger and some would look like uh, they're walking through the towers. <clears throat> uh, yeah, what else? Also, if we choose to be able to block the path from start to finish, then we need to give the monsters the ability to crash or smash the towers and delete them. Um, right now, I'm not going to do anything about the fact that we can wall in our player like so, because it doesn't matter for the game. We will simply just have the functionality for clicking on him on the towers and uh, being able to sell them again. So if you if you wall in your player by mistake, well, then simply just sell a tower. Um, also, yeah, there will be buttons when I click on any of the towers. There will be some buttons for upgrading the tower and for selling the tower. Um, so you get some money back. And as I said in the beginning, there will be better buttons for these towers out here. One more thing I would like to show you before I end this log is where the shots are coming from. As you can see here, if I place a fire tower here, you might notice that the shot is always coming from the front cannon here. Later, I will, of course, implement it so that the shots are coming from the cannon, that, the cannon that's closest to the mob, so that if the mob is up here, it will shoot from here, and if it's on the side, it will shoot from this one. But right now, you'll see that it just comes from, from this position. Uh, the shots are not animated, but they are turning towards the mob. So as you can see, if it's spawned up here, it will turn around and, and shoot towards the, the monster. It's kind of hard to see when it goes so fast, but it, it, it's pointing towards the, towards the target all the time. Also, yeah, all the towers, of course, if you haven't noticed already, they all have um, have damage animation on them, um, as you can see here. So that, yeah, uh, attack animations, I mean. So every time they shoot, they do this little pop here so that they shoot at the mob. Um, as I told you earlier, we have this, uh, this um, what's it called, this play mode here where we need to wall in all our monsters. And I shared my concern about that we will not be able, to, if we should be able to place towers while the game is going on. Uh, I would actually very much like to hear your um, opinion about that. Uh, if you think that we should be able to buy towers during the rounds, or if we should only be able to buy towers in between rounds, or if you want the monsters to be able to smash the towers, or, um, or, or if that's totally out of the picture. Also, let me know what you think about the game in general as uh, so far. And if there's any features that I'm overlooking that we should be implementing in this game. Um, because I would very much like to hear your input about this so that I can make the tutorial and the game as good as possible. Um, so yeah, if there's something that I'm totally missing, some obvious things about tower defenses, then please uh, please let me know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that lots of you guys out there has way more experience with, uh, with different tower defense game th games that I have. Um, for example, what are we going to do with the monsters when the round is over? Um, what is happening when the monsters are running through the game and and they don't get killed uh, and so on? And one thing that I'm very concerned about is the tuning of the game. I know it's very hard to make the game balanced in a tower defense game. How strong should the monsters be? Um, how hard should the 
um, Tao's hit and so on. Uh, I would also like to know um, about what you think about upgrading the towers. Um, what should we upgrade? Is it just the damage on the towers? Is it the is it the range of the towers? Is it the speed of the of the shots and so on? What what makes more sense to do? Um, Again, thank you very much for following the series and watching the videos. Um, all your input is very, very important to me and it's awesome to hear your input about all these things. Remember that InScope Studios is a community founded page, which means that all your support is very, very important to me. When you guys support me, it makes it way easier for me to afford the different sprites and everything that I put in the game, which means that the more support you give me, the better my tutorials will get. For example, this tower defense tutorial wouldn't be possible at all if it wasn't for all you guys that actually support me. You can support me in different ways. You can either go to the Patreon page in the top of the screen right here to support me there. If you support me there, you can get some different perks and you will be able to download all my Unity projects. You can also support me by clicking the link on the bottom of the screen where you can acquire the files for any of my current projects. Also, please don't forget to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and subscribe to this channel for more videos.